Hey everybody, just a reminder that Rant Cafe is now available as a podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, and more. If you want to check us out on those platforms, link in the description. If you want to watch Rant Cafe live and contribute in the chat, and also attend the after parties that we are now hosting, follow Anime Opera, Rant Cafe, and Beastly Briggs on Twitch, links also in the description. Finally, for some reason during this stream, the camera was not showing me while I spoke, and by me, I mean Animac, of course. So instead of me, please enjoy looking at Misty's face, Briggs's face, and Noxtaku's avatar. Hey everybody, what is going on? It's Animac here from the YouTube and Twitch channel Anime Uproar, and welcome to another episode of the Rant Cafe podcast. We are now, big news everyone, we are now available on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, so Stitcher, cool. all over the place. We're everywhere where you get your podcasts. So, you know, if you're listening from any of those places, hey, how's it going? Joining me today for this week's episode where we will be talking about five must-watch anime for the winter 2019 season, we have a special guest, Misty Cronexia. What up, Misty? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Uh, this is my second time on Run Cafe. I uh, did one last year, and I'm back for this year to kind of clear my schedule for the rest of the year, and I'll see you again next year. Yes, thank you for your... <laughs> Very no, exciting. I'll probably, I'll probably be back sooner, yeah. Yeah, yeah Misty we're, is... Con- we're really happy to have you too. <laughs> Misty is contractually obligated to appear at least once, so, you know, he's getting it out of the way early this year so he can get on with his life. Thank you. <laughs> we also have Taku from the Taku channel. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Glad to be here. Not here for the memes at all. Even though my favorite pastime recently has been triggering Animac, we will have to talk about anime as well. Yeah, that, w- that will be happening. And finally, we have Briggs from All Day Anime. Hey, Briggs. Oh, hey, hi, hello. What's up, guys? Good to be here. I'm particularly excited about this one. I know it's kind of become a meme that like, oh, every season of anime is the new best season ever, guys. But this one's actually pretty fire, so I'm excited. Yeah, this season is better than the whole last year. (laughs) Here's how I feel about this season. It's, like, really, really good and, like, really, really bad. Yeah, but the good news is you don't have to watch the really, really bad ones. Yeah. I guess. Because we do the hard work for you guys. Yeah, exactly. We clean up everything. We just, here's the good ones, forget the rest. Yeah, and and that's kind of the point. In about, like, three years, we're only going to talk about, like, maybe two or three shows on this list. Yeah, and that's I kind of the know. point. So for this for this stream, Briggs, Knox, and myself agreed on the five anime that we think you really should watch and must watch for this season. However, Misty, if you don't agree or you have any other input, we'll bring that up as well. Because I know oh, you weren't yes, privy yes, to do. our inner discussions about the five that we really want to talk about. Also, we're not going to be talking about anime that are continuing on from the previous season, like uh, JoJo's. Yeah. Yeah, JoJo's, a sequel that's continuing, but a really good one. Um, That time I got reincarnated as a slime. New anime, but it's from previous season. However, we will be talking about anything that premiered this season, whether it's a new anime or a sequel. It's all fair game. Who wants to start? I mean, I'll let you guys go. Or do you want me to go with uh, my personal favorite for the season? Well, um, the thing is, I watched your top ten list, and it's different... Your top five is not exactly the same as ours, I don't think. No, oh, but exactly. here's the thing. like My top ten is split between new IPs and sequels. If I put both of them together, it's not exactly going to be the same. Yeah, so I, I wonder, Misty, tell us what your top five is, including sequels that premiered this season. Uh, starting from the uh, the bottom one? It's up to you. You don't have to rank them, just your five. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, one that I kind of... Didn't really expect to be interesting, but I'm finding myself to enjoy quite a lot. Is Kaguya Sama? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. I love it is very rich. It is like psychological warfare in a very comedic way that's never really been done before. So it's uh, Death Note if it was a comedy rom com. Exactly. Yeah, that's kind. Of, it's kind of how I put it in my top ten, and honestly, I I think it has a lot to offer if it keeps going at the pace it is. I think by the time you reach like a few episodes in, it's going to have a lot of variety. Yeah, I also very much enjoy it. I think the writing is fun. I love the dynamic between the two characters. 
it's not like one of those shows that I want to see go on forever. I want it to have its nice 12 episode runtime with a nice mm -hmm. finale. I don't know if it's going to happen, but as far as what it is, I'm also really liking Kaguya Sama. If they wrap it up with like a good ending, I think it's going to be a really solid one. Side plot Kaguya kills the other person with a death note. <laughs> yeah, no one sees it coming and then <laughs> proceeds to become the main villain of Naruto. <laughs> If Death I can't I falling in love with me, if you yeah. won't fall in love with me, no one could have you. I have to <laughs> right. So I guess we should make some sort of summary what it's about, aside from just Death Note comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, the, the plot is about a guy that uh, is the president at the school. He's the smartest guy in the country. And basically, he has a vice president and both him and the girl Thing, the other person is in love with them so they try to get a confession out of the person that is well the opposite person but it's better than that because yeah. they feel like if they're the one that confesses they'll be the underdog in the relationship yeah, so it's, it's, it's paramount power. that the other one confesses so mm -hmm. after they realize they're in love with each other the story starts six months later when they're both in love with each other, they both know that they're in love with each other, and they're just playing mind games to get the other character to confess their love. And there's like this cute scoreboard in the anime also. Like after every encounter, it's like yeah, yeah. Kaguya one, other guy zero. It's like after he's forced to leave the room or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's lighthearted, but it's also like so geniusly psychological. At the same time, yeah, the conversations and dialogue is actually ex like like really it's it is a rom com, but it's so entertaining just to listen to these guys go back and forth. And it's great because they're like two super geniuses, and they're coming up with like a million strategies. Their minds moving at a mile a minute, and then you have the random secretary girl who says something stupid that changes the whole conversation <laughs> completely. And they both have to come up with entirely new genius calculations to be like, oh. Now that that said, if I say this, then it will come out sounding like this, leaving them an opening to attack me, causing me to say, would you like to go to the movie with me? Yeah. <laughs> it feels kind of... Uh, have you seen One Out? I love One Out. It's kind of like that, except not baseball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I like One Out better. Yeah, of course. One thing, yeah, but I, then again, say, one thing I have to say about rom-coms like high school rom-coms especially i kind of got burnt out on them since i feel like in the past few years we really haven't had those classics like anohana or your clanads or your toradora haruhi well, i disagree on clanad but um i well, feel like there, there's, there's always a few ones i mean there uh, i think it was in 2015 there was uh yamada kun and the seven witches which i thought was fantastic i really like that also yeah but that is and... already years ago right so yeah but just last year we had um bunny girl sampai yeah, which well, i thought was the best rom-com i guess i guess it's a rom-com mm -hmm. well, the best Hello. one for years well before you voiced your ridiculously wrong opinion about Kanad, i was going to say that with bunny girl senpai and kaguya i have kind of getting more faith again in in this genre of the high school rom-com i feel like we're feeling, you know, we're experiencing a sort of rebirth of quality rom-com. Well, the, the thing is, the, they need to have a different spin on them. You can't just have, like, the, exactly. the, the cookie cutter, like, the girl they falls in love with the girl, and they build it up from there. They have, it has to have, like, some kind of twist on it to, to make it stand right, like out nowadays. Kaguya-sama has the crazy mind games. Bunny Girl Senpai has um, puberty syndrome, which is basically puberty with a twist. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you don't have your Toradora style or your Golden Time. I thought Golden Time was the last really good one. Kind of. I feel so out of mix, like, so out of it with this, this genre just in general. Because you guys talk about these classics, and I haven't watched any of them, guys. I mean, I mean th this season, there, there was another rom-com, um, The Quintuplet Girls. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of ass, but I, I see why some people would like it. Mm. Look, I, I thought it was funny, but at the same time, I don't I don't think it's even nearly as good as Kaguya-sama. So, like, I think the top five this season are way better than anything below the top five. Yes, yes, absolutely. Like, it's not even a contest. The the one that are, like, actually in, in the running for, for the best for this season don't even compare with the rest, but... I'm I'm gonna put like the the quintuplet girl in in the bottom ones, 
even though it's kind of probably one of the better of the bottom ones, uh, the, my biggest gripe with it is you could watch the only the first episode of it and you have the whole package. Like, why would you need to watch the rest? You already know how it's going to end. You already know, like, the dynamic between the characters. If it was, like, like a one-shot, I would be out and done with it. And honestly, it's pretty much what I am going to do with it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'm, I, not, I mean, I'm not sticking through that one. I'm totally yeah. fine with having, you know, five anime that are quality because let's remember that nowadays they make a lot more anime every season than they used to. So even if a bunch of them are subpar, if we're getting five quality anime every season, that would be amazing, right? So I'm yeah. 100% down for that. By the way, thank you to Ingrata for don donating some magic crystals. If you're watching the uh, listening to this as a podcast, we are streaming live on Twitch twitch.tv slash anime uproar also twitch.tv slash rant cafe so that is what is happening we do have a live chat that we discuss things with once in a while getting some feedback etc now what a nice plug yes of course yeah now, <laughs> uh what do we still want to talk about kaguya or do we want to move on no, to... I, th I think we, i think we got around it um, i think kaguya is still like my least favorite of my yes, yes, yes. My Kage is my least favorite of the top five, but still. That's kind of why small. I started with that one. Ooh, yeah. Top ten list master. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I keep it always in a ranking somewhere in my mind. Uh, after that, I would. Here's the thing: a lot of people will not agree with me, uh, but this comes like to personal preference. But Dororo, I think, is a fascinating show. I think it's really good, but because of its historical setting, I just, I just don't get into it. I so love it. I, I love, I love Dororo. Dororo. <laughs> Dororo. It's Dororo with those instead of A's, okay? And no yeah, Zaya, right. unfortunately. That's that's the basic premise. Mm. Not at all, but whatever. Um, I really like Dororo. I feel like, first of all, just the fight scenes are really fun. Because yes. you have this guy who was born without skin, without any of his five senses. Can, can we agree that the, uh, the main character is basically a human Beyblade? <laughs> I was thinking basically sorcery without the, but yeah, okay. Human Beyblade is definitely better. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah. I well, love Dororo because I think personal. I personally, I love history and Japanese history and folklore is huge in this. It kind of reminds me actually of um, Mushishi. Mushishi. Yes. I knew you were gonna say that. Exactly, I and I love. That. I absolutely love Mushishi. So I'm really into this i love the lord like the demons and all this kind of stuff going on i love the fact that it's pre-edo period so a lot of the yeah. stuff we get from japan is edo period which was a very peaceful time in japan because everything was uh, ruled over by a single shogun but right mm -hmm. before the edo period it was crazy warfare japan was constantly in war there was more war in japan than anywhere else in the world right so this is this chaotic period that this anime is taking place in it's obviously a sort of paranormal anime as well but so far i'm really enjoying it i like the characters i like the world i thought that the backstory of uh the guy so his name is something with a j i forget now but Hi the guy who Hiyaki created maru. The... Hiyaki maru no the guy with the j that created his prosthetics oh that guy yeah we got his backstory so and we're like... about to talk we're, we're about to discuss like our favorite parts of dororo and he mentions the worst character <laughs> <laughs> i mean he has a pretty cool beard <laughs> He does have a good beard. Good call. And that's the end of his character. No. <laughs> his, see, this is this is why it's good that I host these podcasts because otherwise we would just have people who don't know what they're talking about and Misty Chronexia here. <laughs> I personally love his character because he is very rooted. His character, his backstory is rooted in that horrible, chaotic world. He was following orders and doing these horrible things militarily, you know, killing rebels and all this stuff and torturing them. And he couldn't take it anymore. He tried to kill himself, but he survived. He went went overseas, learned the technique of creating prosthetics, and then he comes back and tries to kind of like, um, I guess, heal you know, the dead with the the yeah yeah. He tries to make up for his sins. Now, I yeah. will say that the prosthetics yeah. technology or, it doesn't it just make any for anyone who, anyone who may be listening that's planning on taking a life lesson out of this. Don't kill people and then give them fake arms. It's just it doesn't work that way. But yeah. yeah, continue, anime. The point is, first of all, don't interrupt in the first place. Second of all, <laughs> um, I love the fact that he's trying to kind of make up for his sins and all this type of stuff. So it makes him a fascinating character. Although I will say that the prosthetic technology is completely unrealistic for the time period. But I guess if we can accept the demons and stuff, we can accept that as well. 
yeah. I mean, the 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 problem I have with the show is not on a technical point. It's only on on a subjective aspect. Like I find the anime to be kind of monotone. Like the the drawings is very bland. bland. Yeah, Weak. yeah, exactly. And a, a lot of people like that, but I'm I'm more on the side of liking like vibrant color and shit like that. So I for am, me, I, well, I am I with you. Yeah. Like I, I'm a no I, game, I no life type of aesthetic you. type of guy, but I think mm. based on the story itself, it makes way more sense. Obviously, yeah, of course. I mean, I, it wouldn't make sense to have it like super bright or even like uh, Roroni Kinshin, which is kind of similar taste. But uh, it, it for, for me, it's just not appealing. Yeah, well, well I, I completely, I, I completely do disagree see what with you're this. Saying, mm -hmm. But I, um, I do like the aesthetic. Um, aspect but what I like is I feel like every character in that setting is kind of believable like you have the guy's father who's you know yeah, he's greedy absolutely. you want power he's ambitious these are traits that you actually see so mm -hmm. he will literally sign a deal with the devil and when that deal comes becomes fulfilled and his son is born looking uh, kinky like a mashed he, potato yeah yeah like a mashed potato <laughs> yeah um He'll get Just rid of the Beyblade. <laughs> well, that's definitely work. an upgrade from mashed potato to a Beyblade. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, guys, come on now. Like, I totally don't care about the colors. Like, oh, the pretty colors. Like, that's why you guys love No Game No Life, which is just pretty colors and not, not much really. else. Like, no, it has a lot to offer. No, thank you, oh, Missy. Look at that. Let, let's Missy not get into the, the right No time. Game No Life discussion, Animac. I mean, everyone basically disagrees with you. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, I'm an elite, an elite uh, taste connoisseur yes. for anime. Yeah, what and really we can tell by, by, by your all being ran, ran away. Mm. <laughs> That's by exactly the way, what happened. Pooh Zerker, the absolute mad lad, just donated one thousand magical crystals. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a lot of crystals, dude. Thank you. Yeah. yeah and he like called us out. the best anime community. So you I can mean, probably make God. meth out of all these crystals. <laughs> <laughs> only the blue ones. Only the blue ones. Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing I have to add for the ro 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 proper pronunciation, by the way. Um, Thank you. PM. <laughs> I got you, Nux. I got you. Um, yeah. Is that so? Like I've realized. So in the newest episode, as he kills demons he's slowly becoming more human. So like they showed the flashback where his leg grew back, but they also showed that now he has feeling. I don't know if it's in the whole body or just the one leg now in the newer thing. Well, so, like, I think the original is based on a, uh, on an anime that came out in the seventies. So it's like a reboot kind of, of the, uh, the old anime. See, if you've seen the original, you kind of know where it's going to go with it. Really? I didn't, I did not actually know that at all. Uh, um, but what's it called? I think it's gonna be really cool to see, him become more human as the show goes on and how like his first reaction to becoming human but in like mm -hmm. a grown grown up body type of thing yeah all right so thoughts on why it's called dororo after that called beyblade uh probably because beyblade was already taken yeah but so... if not for that it would have been called beyblade yeah i, I would have called it beyblade all right. Well, because Dororo sounds cooler than Hyakimaru. Actually, it doesn't sound cooler. It does not. Hyakimaru sounds like a bankai from Bleach. It does. That <laughs> is a Hyakimaru. that is a good Hyakimaru. point. Spin! Hyakimaru. <laughs> um, a few people in the chat agree with me that they love the Dororo aesthetic, which I 100% agree with. But yeah, I'm I'm really impressed with this anime so far. I like the world. I like the backstory. I like the characters. We'll see how it goes. But mm -hmm. so far, I'm liking it and highly recommend it. Again, there are some scenes of gore and stuff like that. But if you're an anime fan, you're probably okay with stuff like that. Just don't so. be a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't. He said to a 12-year-old like... girl watching <laughs> Barbie shows. Hey, 12-year-old girls real. watch anime too. Yeah, they do. But uh, normally, it's more Glitter Force and less Dororo. Yeah, Dororo Fair is enough. more mature, but... Yeah, they have taste in, in watching a game of life. <laughs> do we know who owns the rights to Dororo? Uh, Definitely not A1 Pictures because everything A1 Pictures puts out has so many colors it makes you orgasm. No, I meant like um, provider wise. Like I know Crunchyroll doesn't have it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have it this season. The the studio? Not the studio, just like the, the distributor. The licensing. A distributor. Cool. Distributor. Oh, it's license. Twin Engine. Twin Engine? Yeah, they're 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 the producer for it. 
No, he's no, talking about the distributors like, in the West. Where do you actually watch this thing? Exactly. Oh, um, <laughs> other than Kiss Anime. <laughs> Uh, I don't um, know. I I don't think it's on Crunchyroll. It's not, and I'm it's just curious. Not. Does Netflix have the rights? That'd be cool. I'd I'd love to see it on Netflix once again. Uh, they're probably gonna, f they're probably gonna get it considering how good it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, the th problem with Netflix is that you're going to find out in six months whether they have it or not. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just really curious. I I actually just kind of updated my Crunchyroll membership today to watch Promise Neverland. I hope oh. you use Crunchyroll.com/slash/misty. Uh... Oh damn! <laughs> I mean, I'm only using a 14-day trial, so I can maybe hook that okay. up right now, like uh, for my actual reboot. Yeah, we've uh, had, pe I've people. Had... People say it's on Amazon Prime, so oh, oh, okay, cool. so Amazon then. Yeah, yeah. I have Amazon Prime. I have Netflix. I have Crunchyroll. All that stuff because I support the industry and all, and so so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah, which is pretty hilarious because you didn't even know where I watched it, which implies. Which implies you want to finish Which that implies that number three. Number yeah. three on the list is going to be. The list. Thanks uh, for your uh, pretentiousness, Animac. Nicely done. <laughs> number three, I'm putting Mob Psycho. Well, I would put. Okay, fine. Well, we could talk about Mob Psycho, although I do like it better than Shield Hero, which I'm sure is your number two. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, I mean, thanks we for can't ruining judge Shield Hero yet. We've only watched like two or three episodes. Yeah. So it'd be um, unfair. We're like, we know Mob Psycho's was fire by the previous season. So it's like I put that at number one, considering I know nothing about these other shows, really. Yeah, yet. but the thing uh, with I don't Psycho know. I would put it number two. Mob Psycho kind of went from like, like the, uh, the super badass of the ending of the first season to kind kind of cute and wholesome in season two. And I want to see where it's going to build up to. I hope it's going to kind of start the same way it did with season one and hand with a pretty big finale because I don't read the manga for it. So I'm not really sure where it's going to go. From what I understand, it will do that. I do not read the manga either, but from what I understand, well, I feel like that. that's just the whole thing with Mob Psycho. He's slowly building up to his 100%, right? Like they show yeah. in every episode him mm -hmm. about the snap type of thing. Yeah, how yeah. long yeah. he has well, before I he think. Snaps. One of the major points of Mob Psycho is kind of the wholesome moments because despite mm -hmm. all this power he has, he only wants to be normal. Yeah. So, and of course it has Reagan, which is best boy ever. <laughs> yeah, Reagan's pretty cool. I, honestly, at first, didn't really like him, but he kind of grew on me. Like a tumor. Yeah. Yeah, no, no but I, I fucking love, love Reagan. I yeah, love I mean. Reagan. I loved him from the start. It's like, not, not that I relate to him or anything. But, uh, well, I mean, obviously you do relate to him because you're also a tasteless troll, but <laughs> hold, on, fair... hold on, I will defend Reagan. He has great taste. Troll? Yes. Con artist? Potentially. However, <laughs> definitely potentially with an asterisk, but, uh, tasteless, I disagree. Well, but... I will agree with you that he's a good character because I like him and I like Unox. So it makes Aww. sense. It makes sense. <laughs> I have, a soft spot, I have a soft spot for, you know, there we go. tasteless Mob con Psycho artists. definitely strengthened our relationship here. Oh, yeah, there you, go. you went wholesome, just like the first episode of season two. You oh, went wow. full circle. I really liked... Well, the second episode didn't have all that wholesomeness, and it had, first of all, more Reagan awesomeness. I haven't seen is... the second episode yet. Is it out? It is out. Oh, okay. The first and three it are has out. Dimple! Hell yes! Dimple. Dimple's pretty cool. Dimple's amazing. Dimple is very him. cool. But no, I really loved the first episode of uh, Mob Psycho Season 2. I, I like the whole thing, and I think Reagan is a great character, and I will talk about him in a minute, but I really loved how in the first episode, the whole element with a uh, mob and the girl, Ari, I believe it was, or Emmy, mm -hmm. like, I, I thought that kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting this from Mob Psycho. And then they had this kind of, like, moment where it's like she was dared to ask him out because he went up to run for student body president and he couldn't say a whole word and then they, she got dared by her friends and yet they strike up this interesting relationship and then her friends make fun of her that she is writing a novel and they rip it up and mob goes and helps her correct all, collect all the pages and then he tells her that he's a psychic like out of nowhere after hiding it for so long from almost everybody i thought that was really cool like it's not a romance anime per se but i thought that no, episode it, really it, kind it, of it, it, Really did it's good well. character development. That's, but th that's what yeah. I'm saying. Mob Psycho is really about the character Mob trying to be human. He's trying to live as a normal guy, even though he's insanely powerful. Yeah, yeah. And he's been putting it back so long that he's just kind of starting to accept who he is as a person. So I think it's a great way to start season two. 
And I really I'm, wanted him to win studi- student body president or whatever, even though he said no <laughs> words. Because like you showed afterwards like how everyone got excited the fact that he went up because he's slowly making all these friends throughout mm-hmm. season one, right? Yeah, I thought it would have been really funny if he won without saying a word and then had to like drop drop out or quit because like <laughs> he can't talk to people. Yeah, I, don't know, I liked great... when his brother's like, well, I was going to support you, but mob changes everything. Yeah. Exactly. It was a great first episode, 100%. I, I really, I flew right back into it after not watching it for a long time. So I love that first episode. In terms of Reagan's character, I really like how he starts off as this like con man who seemingly has no sense of right and wrong, doesn't care about anything other than making money. And yet you see him slowly becoming more empathizing more with mob and with other people, especially this came to light in episode three, I believe. Um, and yeah, I really think Reagan is like that interesting character that you first you're like, what is this guy thinking? But then you're like, OK, so there is something human about this guy. Yeah, he's kind of a carn artist, but he's also kind of a troubled soul and a, and a good guy. So mm-hmm. I like characters like that that are not simplistic, that have different dimensions to them. Yeah, he definitely does have uh, different dimensions, and I absolutely love Reagan. He's my favorite part of the show right now because of how much I like his character. He More basically, than Dimple? Yeah, Dimple is a pretty fantastic fellow, but yeah, Reagan I like a lot better than Dimple. All right. but Reagan can fit into every meme. Reagan yeah. is one of my favorite anime characters, bro. The same he's, here. He's amazing. I mean, in the beginning of season one, it's like ambiguous if he even believes spirits exist or not, and he's working as an exorcist. Mm-hmm. Then, like, he gets <laughs> Mob because Mob wants someone who can be like his, you know, his sensei, and he's like, "Of course, I'll train you." Thinking, yeah, right, spirits don't even exist. Yeah, and like, you know, he has like his secret attacks, like you know, super psychic drop kick where he drop kicks his opponent. Right. <laughs> I mean. I love him. And the way he storms into that base at the end of the first season. Yeah, it doesn't give a shit. His his confidence and composure. And he's up against all these guys with crazy powers. He can do absolutely nothing. And he takes down the whole place until the end. No, I 100% agree. And and again, very much like Nox Taku. Because with Nox, he is so sarcastic that you don't even know if he even likes anime. But he has an anime channel and he talks about it. So very similar. Mm -hmm. I... uh, Yes. Like, I wouldn't say, like, Reagan's completely tasteless either, like you were saying before. I feel like even though he was a con artist, he was always still helping people and then wouldn't overcharge them. Like, he would, ba- like, charge them barely anything, take whatever, like, they're willing That's to give. That's the beauty. And he then has... he'd still help them because mm-hmm. if it doesn't exist, then, like, them thinking they got helped is what's helping them. Right, yeah. so like he'll he'll Placebo. get rid of an evil spirit that's possessing someone by like giving them a massage when he's just giving them a massage, <laughs> and he has such a weird morality because he's a con man and he knows it, but at the same time he's so moral about the crimes he's committing. Would that and he's such a good like parental figure for Mob as well. <laughs> yeah, and now that he knows what's going on, he has Mob around, and he's even though Mob at this point knows he's a charlatan. Still, he's like, Mob, can you take care of this one? It's too weak for me. And Mob's like, okay, sure. And he like takes it down. He's like, nicely done, Mob. Next time, mind the tentacles. You know, does, like does Mob no. know for sure? Like at the end I, of the season, I he was like, so. No, I think he he looks up to Regan so much that he just doesn't see him as a con artist. I don't know. I in think the beginning, I was sure that was. was the case. But at this point, I kind of think Mob's not that stupid. But still, no, Reagan. Reagan is looking after him, and he is helping these people out. So you know, maybe yeah, but there remember, is something to him. Remember that at Not the end I would of, agree. Go remember ahead. that at the end of season one, Reagan actually ends up manifesting powers. Yeah, yeah he that was mob's, mob's power. Powers. Mob, and... mob's power was that he had gave his friend power, so Reagan got strong enough to destroy everyone. Yeah, but, but the didn't thing is, that mob didn't actually... know that he gave him power. Didn't that actually make it uh, make people think that Reagan has real powers, even though it wasn't his power? Like yeah. he's so that strong only made that, that opponent can't even sense his abilities. Right. That mm-hmm. was that's that that that's yeah. Basically, reverse psychology, psychic powers. So strong, you can't even sense it. And it, like it goes with the thing because he's trying like like a uh, mob wants to become more human, so he's wa- he's like following the best psychic ever, who you can't even sense because he's so human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is a really cool concept. By the way, it's amazing dynamic. Thank you to Ingrata earlier for donating ten dollars to support the Ran Cafe cause. Also, thank you to Poozerker for donating another five hundred magic crystals here on. Yeah, but Poozerker had an incredible comment. 
It's Reagan throws salt everywhere, just like Knox. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that correct, is very right? true. <laughs> that is very, very true, Knox. Thank yeah, you for catching that I don't know. It, it's creepy because at this point, I feel like my personality is some kind of amalgamation between Gintoki from Gintama, Reagan from Mob Psycho, and Pariston from Hunter x Hunter, and it's terrifying me. Man, I and think the I from should... Hunter x Hunter. I think now I should make how I look, which is why I don't show my face. I think I should make a video about Reagan that's actually about Nux, but I just pretend it's a, it's about Reagan. <laughs> Let's see what happens. One. But but anyway, yeah, Mob Psycho season two definitely enjoying it so far. I I, I think he had an even stronger start than the first season, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, really looking forward to seeing where it goes next, and I want to see more of that Emmy girl. I thought. Even though Mob actually likes yeah. another girl at first, I feel like that relationship is kind of like there's something there, guys. Yeah, but they're they're not gonna exploit it. They're they're gonna go back to the main girl at some point. So, hey, she, well, she's she's just a stepping stone. They might surprise me. I don't know. I want to see. I want to. <laughs> but I, I'm kind of with you. But that what? brings me. I to don't my think. Number two. I honestly, I don't think Mob's interested in her anymore. At we'll all. See. It could I think be, he, he was just showing like he's just a nice guy and he was willing to help her out even though she tricked him. But I don't think he wants this to continue. We'll see. Oh, yeah. We'll see. You could be right. Or he could realize that the girl that he has, you know, put up on this pedestal is actually not the girl for him, but rather the other girl. So we'll see. Yeah. Don't know. I, don't think it's I feel like they're hinting anime. too hard that the other girl actually secretly likes Mob as well, but like Mob doesn't have the confidence to even talk to her, so it's just not gonna happen until he develops you know yeah kind of yeah but we'll yeah see. rising shield rising oh shield. my god the best anime of the season i don't so want to fucking hear. good here's the thing rising shield is a dumpster fire and i love it for that exact reason that's not why i like it but okay go on it's it's pandering and it is uh, it's just like cliche and like generic and that's exactly why I like it because it does the JRPG trope exactly how Sword Art Online should have done it. It's funny because that's not why I like it at all. I mean, I do see where you're coming from, but I mean, why I like it is super predictable. Yeah, yeah. I predicted the entire thing the whole yeah. way through. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I feel like it's that isekai jrpg setting that we've mm -hmm. seen many times before but at yeah. the same time society kind of functions like a normal society does yeah well it normally is uh Rezero kind of had that or no yeah, but Re Life had Rezero that. didn't focus on society it focused on like the princesses for example okay, or well, um, gate no game no that? life gate was oh i actually really did not like gate yeah but, but it, it had that aspect in it but no, not really. It had a bunch of different sects of people. It didn't have one society that we focused on. The only really society-focused isekai anime was Log Horizon. And yeah. it went a totally other route. And Log Horizon is my favorite isekai after Digimon, which is, oh, let's be honest, Digimon's the greatest isekai anime ever. Here we um, go. But to, to get off that topic, of which no one can disagree with me, because I'm mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Misty. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, Shield Hero functions in a society where, you know, you have the main character. Now Fumi? Is that his name? Yeah. Now Fumi, yeah. I yes. called him Shield Hero. <laughs> so, so I didn't say have... his name once in my entire video. Nice. Well, <laughs> we, we have Shield Hero guy who he's coming into this world completely idealistic. He's nerdy enough to know what an isekai anime is. And he's like, what? I'm in an isekai anime. Yeah, everything's gonna be hunky dory. Yeah, and it's it self aware, and it ain't. It's his self awareness that killed him in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, because because he was expecting the kind of uh, and I and I mean I love this about it, and I think I think the official name is the Rising of Shield Hero, not Shield Rising Misty, but uh, it all works. He said oh, Rising yeah, yeah. Enough. <laughs> we know what you mean. Um, yes. Look, it's based on a light novel. the The title's gonna be two and a half sentences. Yeah, true, yeah. true. I mean, the Rising of Shield Hero is it's like, Captain probably... America, the anime, and uh, from now on shall be known as such. Yeah, um, Captain Japan. <laughs> I actually thought that, even though I do like the idea of he he comes into this world, he's expecting it's all gonna go great for him. He's gonna be this overpowered hero, like in 
Isekaiwa smartphone or ReZero or anywhere you go, you and have all these. Kind of, and they kind of like um, point that out to him also. He's one of the four legendary heroes that will bring salvation to the kingdom. Uh, yeah, but and everybody then, hates him. And like, then everyone's before, like, be, even before like the uh, the con part, uh, everybody was like, "Oh, this is the shield hero? Fuck that guy!" Yeah, and that was funny because everyone's like, "Oh, I'm this, I'm the spear hero, I'm the sword hero." It's like, "Oh, hey, shield hero, bro. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're 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 a thing too." So that was interesting. But yeah, the world turns on him completely. It's not like you're this overpowered guy. All the girls love you. All this stuff. It's the opposite. So I did like that aspect of it. However, I thought that the first episode was the weakest because was it? Yeah, I thought that the first episode had a lot of issues. I did not have an issue with a villainous female character doing something villainous to another fictional character, but I did have an issue with the motivations of the spear hero and the girl that uh you know that tricks con him, yeah. the shield hero. It's like why would they con this guy over what like they're both legendary heroes you're gonna con him over a few you know a few silver coins and then everyone immediately is like this guy is the biggest piece of crap in the whole world however I we're not gonna arrest him so we're not gonna let him actually shine better we're not gonna it, arrest it, him and let him actually like uh you know stop him from doing these crimes alleged crimes in the future we're just gonna let him go anyway so that part i thought was wasn't that good also, the setup was pretty basic isekai stuff, like, you know, he's sucked into this world. Nothing special. But I really liked episodes two and three, how the shield hero's mentality switches. He becomes this, like, outlaw. He's like, the world turned on me. I'm cynical. Well, I don't give a shit the, anymore about anything. It, it kind of happens in the first episode. He just, he just gets street smart. And that's yes. something that I find really commendable for an anime character. Just, like, the, the way he, he, he managed to, like not get fucked over by the uh, the the vendor by just bringing monster in the city yeah, yeah. i thought i was genius so i agree with misty here i think it's so i don't agree in the fact that i don't think it's a generic isekai because the one thing that i think stood out stood out was his transformation he got fucked over so hard that he was like hey i'm gonna be the asshole and the villain that you guys make me out to be fuck you guys like he like he uses that as a facade like Mm -hmm. um even in the third episode he was like well i guess if you're gonna like come here and like treat me like shit i'll just let these fucking zombies attack you guys but then he actually saves them right and yeah. it's the same thing like he's like he had this like evil grin on him but then he was actually a good guy like his asshole or evilness is just a facade and he's a good guy behind it but he needs to have that facade to survive in this cruel world so yeah, i think I that agree. transformation i agree 100 percent with that but the thing that i um thought was kind of what i mean by the setup i mean like he gets sucked into this world through a book like it wasn't anything like special like Fair in konosuba enough. the way he ever? ends up going to the isekai world that was hilarious right but his character development is definitely awesome i love the conflict in in this guy like so he becomes the cynic the street smart cynic it's like everyone's against me so i'm gonna be very rough on on this on this world because they're rough on me but then we have the slave girl come in right mm -hmm. um Raghaela or something I forget the name exactly Rafael, but yeah. he he's like okay so this world has slaves these demi humans uh, half human half uh, animal that they don't they aren't they're not considered fully human here whatever I'll play along with this system it's the only way I can get someone to actually fight for me because with a shield I can't have offensive power however you can see this sort of hard persona that he's developed conflicted because he immediately sympathizes and empathizes with the slave girl and becomes close to her and you know taking care of her and being kind so it's like this mixture and i think people who come to this anime expecting to some bad message about like society or like they're like oh this is insensitive or offensive whatever are gonna be very surprised because i feel like this anime is gonna end up having a very positive message that in spite of the challenges that you face in the world you can actually you, you know your sympathy or empathy for fellow human beings can still come through and should come through but by by the episode two, you already see like how wholesome it gets when uh, when Raftalia has her nightmare and you just like comfort her, or uh, when when she wet the bed and he's just like, oh shit, that just happened. It has a really like daughter father relationship between them, and that is something that really appealed to me. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that uh, again, he's jaded. At this point, after episode yeah. one and stuff, he's jaded. So he wants to be this, you know, rough guy who just 
does what the, the rest of the people in that world do. But in spite of himself, he's still compassionate and he's still a good guy. And I love that. Yeah, I mean, Rising Shield Hero is, is absolutely my favorite anime right now, tied with the other one. Yeah, for me, it's my favorite because I'm very I'm a very character-driven person, and I think the other one has a great concept, but I haven't fallen in love with the characters just yet. I mean, they're cute I, and all, I, but... Yeah, I think it's just like, it, it's a slow start, but uh, we're, we're talking about the, the Promised Neverland, yeah. uh, which had... Here's the thing. The animes all do the same the same thing. Start something cute and then do a hundred and one eighty on on the whole aspect, and suddenly it's dark. And you had that like in uh, Gako Gurashi. You had the same thing in um, Madoka Magica. It's kind of become a trending to have like something cute and mixed with dark stuff. But it kind of works on this one because I don't know. I feel like the way it was set up with like unlike Madoka Magica, which hit me hard. Episode yeah, three. Cause, cause, yeah, it's episode three, so you're already set in with the the fact that it is gonna be a cute show about cute girls. But there's a huge difference, and that is there was a looming mystery and fear throughout the entirety of episode one before anything happened. Yeah, like they were setting it up very clearly, mm -hmm. extremely clearly. Yeah, and absolutely. I love the Promise Neverland. It's for sure my favorite anime of the season, actually by far. Yeah. I did not read the manga yet, and I definitely mm -hmm. intend to read the entire manga. Yes, like, uh, same, but I'm probably going to wait until like the first season is done because I'm, I'm sure there's going to be multiple seasons of that. But I really want to like devour the whole story. Same with Rising Shield. I mean, both shows are urging me to actually read the, the, the manga or the light novel it's from. Uh, but I'm kind of holding myself back on it. You did not just say devour in the context of Promised Neverland, did you? Yeah, that was a plan. <laughs> Wow. Um, oh, man. I think Promise Too Neverland soon. will become my Too favorite, <laughs> but not yet. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I get your point. Uh, it, it's a little bit on the slower side, especially episode two. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. They're building it up. You could tell they're building it up to yeah. the climax. That's going to be amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But I just, it just hasn't happened yet. So I, I feel like I haven't fallen in love with the series yet. I'm just still yeah. along for the ride. I think it's going to be a wonderful anime to binge watch once it's going to be all out. Yeah, I honestly everything's better to binge watch. Fair, to yeah. Be fair. By the way, did anyone else notice that there was no uh, disclaimer on Crunchyroll about episode one of Promise Neverland, unlike for Goblin Slayer? Uh, to be yeah. fair, Goblin Slayer was a bit more explicit, and also, how Gotta could they do it on Promise Neverland? <laughs> That's a terrible spoiler. Yeah, I mean, they, they would ruin Promise Neverland if they were to spoil it. I mean, it was pretty, like, not predictable, but you, like, like Nux said, the entire episode, you know, so, you knew something was going to happen. Um, and, and then again, like, in Promise Neverland, you don't actually see anything. You just, it's just implied. No, you, you, you see well, stuff. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, I like imagine. Corpse. Yeah, but what are the don't... genres for this? Do we know? For Promise Neverland? Uh, yeah. It's horror and. Uh... Okay. Other stuff. Let me just double down to make sure what I'm saying is true. I was gonna say maybe it's censored because they're trying to aim to a little bit of a younger audience. Sci-fi mystery horror shonen. Yeah, probably not. Sh then. Yeah, shonen oh. horror. Yeah, I really. Shonen yeah, Goblin Slayer is more of a seinen. Uh, but I will say that there is a twisted beauty about Promised Neverland. Like you could definitely yeah. feel that something is not right here in this world from the get-go, but. It's there's so so much beauty in it, like the beautiful nature and all these kids mm -hmm. living, you know, having this big family and living together and loving life. And then then there's this whole like messed up dark side to it. It's definitely appealing. I'm totally into it so far. The first three episodes, I again, it all depends how it goes. But I've heard really good things about the manga, so my, I'm very hopeful and I'm really enjoying this one. Is Neverland episode three out yet? Yeah, yes. I think it came out today. Oh, does it? Oh shit, I'm late. <laughs> I literally watched it right before the stream started. Same here. Oh, I haven't seen it. I'm going to try to yeah, pick it I up. I haven't seen it yet either. So you guys ready to talk about the real best anime of the season? Oh, no. Mm. Sono Chino Sadame. Yeah, part five. I mean, I technically it counts as last season, but it's still going. Yeah, yes. but so my calculation as far as JoJo's part five goes, people don't want to say, look, 2018 was a great year because it had JoJo's part five. Technically... It only one third of JoJo's Part Five is going to be in twenty is in twenty eighteen. 
whereas two thirds of JoJo's Part Five is in 2019. That gives 2019 the edge, and already a better year than 2018. Absolute yeah, so madness. JoJo's <laughs> technically started airing in the last season, so we're not counting yeah. it as the five for this one. However, it is an amazing show, and I 100% ad advise you to check it out. Like the battles in JoJo, like the fights in JoJo, are so much ahead of like almost any other anime that it's insane. Mm -hmm. Like they're so well thought out. They have these powers that you that you think are so ridiculous when you first hear about them, and yet they use them so well for these strategic battles. Like I can't like at this point, anyone who doesn't think that JoJo's has some of the best fights ever, I can't take them seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whoever told you to watch JoJo's, absolute mad lad. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly. Yeah, I'm going to take credit for that one. Yes, <laughs> Nox, you did encourage me to start JoJo's, and I do appreciate it. But I am not going to rewatch all of Digimon just so I can appreciate it as much as you. Stop <laughs> saying rewatch. You never watched it to begin with. Man, my phone keeps on fucking ringing. I, I, I did watch the first two seasons of uh, Digimon. Uh, Digimon 1 and 2. I haven't watched from... Uh... The, the other ones, uh, Frontier, Savers, and... Uh, well, Tamers, did Tamer? you on the third season, Tamers is the best. Tamers. Is it? Yeah. Is it, though? Because it seems pretty ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty amazing. I think it's the best season. Uh, right above season one. That's kind of like the same people who say that uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D is the best Yu-Gi-Oh! No, it's not like that, really, because... Digimon Tamers is actually fantastic. I okay. think that the first arc of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds is great. Like, I think it's better than most of the arcs in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Does it I become like... a racing card game? Well, it should. Unfortunately, that's not the path it takes. Well, <laughs> Digimon, I mean, I, I watched the, the first three seasons. I enjoyed it at the time, but I don't think it's a legendary anime like Nux seems to think. But I mean, I guess to each their own. Um, my bad for converting this conversation. Do you guys have anything else you wanted to say about Promise Neverland? Or are we mm. done with that? I mean, it is an anime that is absolutely amazing and everyone should watch it. And it is a great title. I mean, as far yeah. as titles go, Promised Neverland is so good. I mm -hmm. mean, it sounds like a, you know, like an electronic music festival. I love it. Honestly, I thought it was a uh, kind of a um, Peter Pan spin-off when I heard it. Yeah. Well, it's influenced by the, the concept of Neverland and Peter Pan, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, so to, to sum up, the five anime that, you know, that started premiering this season, Winter 2019, that I think are must-watches include Promised Neverland, The Rising of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hero, Mob Psycho Season 2, um, Kaguya, the rom-com... Mm -hmm. L versus Light, except they're a boy and a girl in high school. Really good stuff. And finally, what was the final one? Dororo. 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 Ro, 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 ro. Yeah, I mean, so these, these are also my, my personal opinion. I think these are the richest anime they have right now. And if you're looking into binging anything, uh, I consider those. And of yeah. course, JoJo. JoJo, if you... 100%. 100%. Also, not, yeah, well, that time I got reincarnated again, as a Again, out of these five anime, they're great. Like, either of... If the season had only one of these five, it would still be an average season. Yep. Yeah. But it has five! <laughs> so, Misty, you have to go, correct? Yes, that is right. I have to pick up my daughter at daycare, so I will have to bid you adieu. Yeah, thank you very much, Misty Cronexia, for joining us. A family man we love to have you here on board and always supporting your good things that you're doing there in the community. Thank you, Thank by you so much for having me. It was a blast of having of society. to talk with you guys. Yeah, see you next year, man. Pleasure, man. Yes. <laughs> see you in <laughs> <Goodbye>. 2020. <laughs> we got Pooh Zerker donating another 500 magic crystals. Let me so see. So on that note, are we doing an after party, boys? Yes, we will do an after party for Rank Cafe uh, at, on the Rank Cafe Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Rank Cafe. Uh, we could, unless you guys have something else to add about these five that we really want people to check out in winter 2019, we could uh, slowly, you know, transition. So I don't know. Do you have anything to add? New. No. Um, well, if you guys want to talk some shit for like 20 seconds while I come up with a title what what should i what should i title this thing 
I don't. Uh, you you'll have you'll have to do it. You'll have to do it. Rank Cafe after party the is five an obvious. The must choice. watch anime series of winter twenty nineteen. Yes, and just to kind of take this one home, bring it home. Uh, once again, Rank Cafe is a weekly anime podcast that we stream live on Twitch. We also upload episodes on YouTube, the Rant Cafe YouTube channel. And we are now available as an audio podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, and, and what was the other one? SoundCloud. Yes, on all of those. So you can get us wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. I did mention that, Nux. You seem to. But always... I wanted to say it again. You know why? Why? Because they like me. <laughs> and someone in chat also just said, technically One Piece has episodes in 2019. <laughs> Best <laughs> anime of 2019, we guys. We almost went a whole stream without bringing up One Piece, Briggs. Almost. <laughs> also, I'm ready to go if you want to. Oh, I hit the mic. Uh, if you want to, what's it called? Raid the shit out of Rank Cafe. I'm also going to point post some links in chat. Thank you for joining me today again. Once again, Mystic Ronexia from the Mystic Ronexia YouTube channel. We had Nox Taku from the Nox Taku YouTube channel and hey. Briggs from the All Day Anime YouTube channel. And of course, I'm Animac from Anime Uproar YouTube Twitch channel. And until next time, everybody, which is next week, see ya, Space Cowboys. And stay weird, fam! Hey.